NAD precursor supplements such as nicotinamide riboside and nicotinamide mononucleotide, NMN, are popular supplements that are hoped to slow the aging process and reduce the risk of disease. And while both supplements have their fans, what effects do nicotinamide riboside and NMN and other NAD precursor supplements have on lowering cholesterol and blood sugar levels? The effects of NAD precursor supplementation on glucose and lipid metabolism in humans, a meta-analysis. Here is a review where the researchers attempted to shed light on these issues. The review included 40 previous studies that included not only the popular supplements like nicotinamide riboside and NMM, but also the less sexy supplements like niacin, nicotinic acid, and niacinamide as well. So what did they find after crunching the numbers? Well. From this analysis, it was concluded that niacin, also known as nicotinic acid, significantly lowers total cholesterol levels. No surprise there. However, neither nicotinamide riboside or niacinamide was effective at lowering cholesterol. Okay, so what about bad cholesterol levels? Same thing. Niacin leads to significantly lower bad LDL cholesterol levels, but neither nicotinamide riboside or niacinamide was effective. Okay, so what about raising good cholesterol levels? Here things are a wee bit different. Both niacin and niacinamide, the other niacin, was found to raise good HDL cholesterol levels. However, nicotinamide riboside appears to have no such beneficial effects on boosting good cholesterol. All right, now let's switch gears and talk about blood sugar. So these researchers point out that NAD precursor supplements can significantly raise blood sugar levels, but the effect is greatest for niacin, which really is no surprise because niacin is known to raise blood sugar. Now on the plus side and conversely, neither nicotinamide riboside or niacinamide raise blood sugar. Based on all of this, when the researchers split the people into healthy and not so healthy groups, they concluded that NAD supplements probably had little effect on blood sugar or cholesterol in healthy people, although in those who had heart disease or cholesterol problems, niacin and niacinamide were probably beneficial. Now, to be fair, the researchers do point out that nicotinamide riboside may be more potent at boosting NAD levels than either niacin or niacinamide, at least in mice that is, but they also highlight something that I've wondered about for a while, and that is the low number of human research studies on nicotinamide riboside. Nicotinamide riboside has been out for a long time, so why aren't there more human studies? See my other videos on nicotinamide riboside to see the human research on this supplement, and I will link to those videos below this video so you can learn more. Okay, so summing up, if we look at the totality of the findings in this research paper, we find that niacin is more effective at lowering total cholesterol levels and bad cholesterol levels than either nicotinamide riboside or nicotinamide mononucleotide. Although where niacin falls short is that it can also raise blood sugar levels. So that's something to consider for those who have blood sugar problems. Also notice all the question marks next to NMN. And the reason for that is there's just not enough human research yet on NMN and cholesterol and blood sugar. I will link to my videos on NMN supplements below this video so you can learn more about that supplement as well. Keep in mind that this review doesn't close the door on nicotinamide riboside or NMN as anti-aging supplements. They may yet prove to have other benefits that were not looked at here. Have you tried nicotinamide riboside or NMN or niacin for that matter? And if yes, how did it work out for you? Leave a comment below. Until next time, I'm Joe from supplementclarity.com. Take care.